Hello and welcome to Zeppola HQ, where Eorzea comes to you. If you're a new gardener, I strongly suggest you check out my basics video first, where I discuss how intercrossing works as well as how to care for your plants. Today, we'll discuss gardening strategy, how you can maximize your yield without wasting too much time. Fair warning, this is not a fun video. It's gonna be pretty info heavy without much room for entertainment. But if you're a brave, inquisitive gardener, watch on. The prime law of gardening is that crosses are determined at the time of planting. Take a look at this empty plot. Here, as I plant the first seed, there is no other plant for him to cross with. This means you'll need to replant him after the rest of the garden is done. Use a junk soil like grade 1 Thanalon for now. The second plot will still cross properly. When you've reached the end, remove the first one and replant him, this time with your good soil. Now he has a friend to cross with and everyone's happy. Sometimes when two plants cross, they don't create a new type of seed. Instead, you'll get more of one of the parent seeds. This is called a loop. For example, glaze nuts and apricots equals more glaze nuts. That's a loop. Or chives plus dalam and popotos equals more chives. Since with gathered seeds, chives typically take two generations and up to 10 days to create, you can save a lot of time by performing a chive loop. Crossing popotos with your chives to get more chives is very efficient, as are most loops. They aren't necessary, but are always good to know and can come in handy. So let's say you've got two types of seeds planted, but after a few days, only one type is ready to harvest. This is because some plants need more time to grow than others. In this example, I'm harvesting popotos while my tomatoes are still growing. Once that's done, I can plant something new that will cross with those tomatoes. This is much better than having to plant a whole new garden from scratch. It's the basis of what is called a perpetual grow. Let's take a look at this calendar to better understand a perpetual grow. Remember that seeds are never guaranteed, and the yields shown here are optimistic guesses. I'll be focusing on seeds obtained and not the actual crops themselves. On June 1st, I plant a fully fresh garden of Midland cabbages and Zemile tomatoes. The asterisks indicate that these are newly planted. Both of these crops take five days to grow, so on June 5th, we harvest up to eight popato seeds and use four of those seeds to plant a new garden of popotos and tomatoes. Tomatoes grow faster, so they'll be ready on the 9th. You can harvest and get up to four chive seeds, then replant some tomatoes and keep the cycle going. The next day, June 10th, those popotos will be ready, so you can harvest and get up to four more chive seeds. We still have some popato seeds from before, so we can replace the ones we just harvested. On June 13th, the tomatoes are ready, so we can harvest and hopefully get four more chive seeds. As you can see, we always replace tomatoes with more tomatoes in this cycle because they're gatherable and they can help us make more popotos as well as more chives. On the 15th, the popotos are ready. We can harvest and get more chives, but now we don't have any popato seeds left, so we'll plant cabbages by those tomatoes in order to get more. On the 17th, tomatoes are ready. They'll yield more chive seeds because when we planted them, they were next to popotos. We'll replace them with more tomatoes that will now cross with the cabbages. On the 19th, our cabbages are ready, hopefully yielding four popato sets that we can use right away. On the 21st, our tomatoes are ready with more popato sets for us. More tomatoes are planted. On the 24th, our popotos are ready, yielding more chive seeds. We can replace them with the four popato sets we got on the 21st. In reality, you may obtain less than four seeds per harvest, in which case we'd need to replant with cabbages for more popato sets. But for the sake of example, let's say we're lucky and are ready to replant popotos. The next day, our tomatoes are ready with more yummy chives. We replace the tomatoes. And five days later, we have a full harvest as the tomatoes and popotos have caught up to each other. We get up to eight chive seeds and are back to where we started on June 1st for a complete grow cycle that rather neatly fits into one month.
If you have access to three garden plots, you can set up your perpetual grow a bit differently. For example, we can cross prickly pineapples and old world figs for glaze nuts, in the second plot glaze nuts and chives for blood peppers, and in the third blood peppers and midland cabbages for chives. This way, if you keep a steady supply of gatherable pineapples, figs, and cabbages, your garden will grow perpetually. Well, unless Nymea hates you. I hope this guide was helpful to you, and I'd love to hear what's growing in your garden. Do you have a self-sustaining harvest, or are you still completely lost? Please let me know in the comments section if there's anything else you'd like me to cover or clarify. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Thank you from the HQ, and I'll see you next time.